we'll get started. Um, thank you all very much uh, for coming to uh, my session, which is on Intro to Bullet Journaling. Uh, my name is Amy Lee, and uh, I've been also an avid supporter of uh, PodCamp over the last couple of years as well, and uh, very happy uh, to be uh, participating and uh, connecting with you all today. And uh, to give you an introduction about uh, what this new concept that is, a fairly new concept that was introduced back in 2016 uh, by a New Yorker by the name of Ryder Carroll, uh, who decided that he wanted to find a different way about journaling and keeping um, his life organized. And uh, what I'm going to be doing with you today is just sharing you uh, some tips, just a little bit of an introduction to what the concept is all about, and uh, certainly uh, share a little bit of my experiences of how I've been able to use it as well, too. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, we have a lovely lady here from Ryerson who is actually doing a class report, so we just wanted to get everyone's permission if it would be okay for her to uh, take some pictures uh, as part of her class report. And we also have, of course, some of our video. Um, which you notice has been videotaped throughout uh, the course of podcast. If anyone has any issues, uh, please let me know and I will put that over. Okay. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Amy Lee. Um, I have been a management consultant in the technology realm and in the business realm uh, for the last uh, 30 some odd years. Uh, my industry experiences have ranged from finance, banking, uh, volunteerism, event planning, uh, management, and complementary health. Uh, I'm from Montreal originally, so uh, my grassroots are home to uh, McGill and uh, the Canadians, but of course, uh, the Leafs do have a spot in my heart as well, too. So. <laughs> but anyways, uh, and if you have any questions, by all means, please feel free to uh, ask along the way. As we tell me, we want to make this fun, and uh, of course, being a podcast conference, it's all about creativity and all about learning and uh, experimenting. What is bullet journaling? Um, in an essence, um, it is, it's, a it's a calendar, it's a planner, it's a journal, all bundled together in one. Uh, it really is a very fluid tool that helps you make what you want it to be. It helps you keep track of the past, the present, the future. You know, it helps you organize anything that's going on in your life currently in all different realms and to make plans for the future. So it really gives you a number of ways to create the journal and makes it easy for you to put your ideas together. Um, what are the benefits of bullet journaling compared to traditional journaling? Um, gives you clarity, helps you to put your to-dos down on paper to be able to visually see. Um, in terms, gives you a sense of organization that it helps you with less time wasters and getting more things done. Um, some people also find it as a method of stress relief uh, think about how good it is to see that everything is actually doable and you can move it all forward because some people may find it very daunting that, oh, I've got all this to do. But sometimes just putting it down and seeing it really works. Um, household management, you know, you are probably, you know, if, if not yourself or someone is the CEO of your family. Um, so it's a good way to plan your dates, plan your day, play dates with your significant others, school activities with your kids, um, anything leisurely. And of course, um, most importantly, helping you to set and meet goals. Um, turn your big blocks of dreams into manageable actions. And that's where the bullet piece will come in and I'll elaborate on that as well. Any questions so far? Okay. And as I said, if you have any feel uh, to start a journal. Um, really basic, all you need is a book and a pen. Um, there are three common components that are part of this journal and I will elaborate a little bit as well. What's great about this system is that he only, he makes it, the founder of it made it very adaptable. Three components involved are the dot, so as in, or a bullet, if you're looking at notes and things. There's a concept called the key and a concept called an index. Um, and I'll go elaborate those a little bit further. Um, when you're looking for a journal, you want to make it personal. And of course, you've browsed at gift shops, the dollar store, Chapters Indigo, lots of really gorgeous designs. 
you want to look for something that's easy, adaptable, you know, something personalized, and there are tons of layouts that are available. What's, what makes a bullet journal different is that because it's more you, uh, some journals have actually been created to design to work in the concept of bullet journaling, where you, know, you might be looking for pre-formatted pages or accessories, or you, know, you want to look for something that, that really speaks to you. It could be the color of your cover, it could be the color of your pages. Um, some people who are very graphical and colorful that like to see things stand out, they'll look for things like stickers, decals, stamps, stencils, um, all kinds of interesting embellishments. Um, and finding the right journal to use, again, sort of what I've described as more, more the exterior, we look at the internal side. From a cover perspective, you know, look at the pages. Like, do you want this to be something that you can pass down to your family or to someone important, if it's a work journal or if it's a personal journal? You know, pages and paper quality make the difference. Do you want hard? Do you want a hard cover? Do you want a soft cover? Would you like thin paper? Would you like thick paper? Um, you know, interesting, we may take for granted that, you know, it's not important, but for some people it really is. People who um, like to use special types of pens, like inking pens or calligraphy pens or pencils or papers. For some people, uh, the sensitivity of it can be very meaningful for them. So, you know, the next time you're browsing, and if you are seriously thinking about embarking on something like this, it's go ahead, look for something, touch it, feel it, you know, hold it. Can I, can I carry this in my pocket? Can I carry this in my briefcase or my bag? Um, if you're looking to, you know, put your thoughts together with big picture ideas and organization, how important is color for you? How important is personalization? Um, the style of your journal, the, the weight. Um, and again, the most commonly overlooked journal details for those that have been really experts in journaling over the years, uh, again, about the embellishments, you know, for some people, hey, it's important for me to have that little rubber band around it, like if you, for example, if you've seen, in, I believe, the Moleskine diaries, they have the little rubber band around them. Um, is it important for me to have a little pocket or a little bit of a, uh, a tarot ruler? So, you know, some, some components to think about. <laughs> so, setting up your journal. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that there were three components. First and foremost, uh, there's a concept that we call, it's the index. So you're wondering, what is, what's a bullet journal index? Um, it's pretty much similar to your table of contents. Uh, why is it helpful? It's helping you to locate and keep track of where, th where things are in your journal. Because the system itself works on three premises. Your dot, your index, and then each of your um, elements that are involved. So, how to set up your index, you know, make sure you have plenty of space. You can organize it in your own way, um, you can be specific, and you can even use creative bullets. It basically is your walking recipe guide for your book to be able to locate. For some people, they may have a bullet journal just devoted to one complete thing. So I'll give you an example. Um, I uh, do a lot of work in technology, and I can be working on one specific project. So, out of all of it, my index will talk about, say, um, my meetings, uh, my important projects, my to-do to -do list, my accountabilities. Um, another section of my index could involve my peers' accountabilities, my peers' comments, their statements. So it's, it can be very, very much broken down because the whole point of it is that you're brief, it's to the point, nothing like the just very, very short form. for a recurring theme or a task that you're routinely logged into. 
So I give you some examples here. Um, you might want to be tracking um, a habit. So I guess fitness habits would be an easy example to use. You can use what they call a habit tracker for any type of habit that you're keeping track of. Um, another one that's very popular and trending is what they call your year in pixels. Tracking your moods in color 365 days of the year, which basically is it's simply a page listed from 1 to 365, and every day, um, some people what they'll do is they'll use a different colored pen or a symbol representing the type of mood they're in for those that are really needing to feel what sense they, they're working in. A lot of um, hospitals and uh, scientists tend to do that if they're really needing to measure the mood of something or the state of something. So that's a collection within. Self. Um, people like to track their books, books and movies, you know, keeping a list of books that you may want to read or movies that you want to see. That's also a, a good portion that comes into the journal. Then after that, once you get into that, comes the pages portion. So write down, we look at the pages, what pages would you like to see in your journal after you've created your, your index or your table of contents. And what's special about this is that you're not writing away, but you're using um, what they call signifiers. And signifiers are your cornerstone of your bullet journal, which gives you that opportunity to make some notes. They're actually symbols to represent each note that you make. So I've given three small examples here. There's a big lexicon of them, so I'm happy to uh, send you a cheat sheet uh, at the end if you'd like to leave your email address uh, on the sheet up front. But the three popular ones here are um, the heart, which is basically the less than sign with the number three. The heart signifier is to help you indicate anything that you like or love. Um, so for example, an example would be for me is um, mango ice cream. Or so if I, I've been pretty much uh, keeping track of different flavors of exotic ice cream. So if I out and about and I'm trying something, hey, mango ice cream is great. I'll put a little heart signifier for that. Um, maybe I've tried red bean ice cream and I don't like it. So if I don't like it, then I will put a symbol that's personal to me. In my case, it's an X. Um, another popular symbol is the asterisk to help you mark something that's very important. And the, the money symbol for anything that's related to budget or finances. So you know, if you need to get your budget, help remind yourself to pay your bill. And then the next concept that comes into is we talk about what we call the key. And basically what your key is, is your legend of what your personal list of signifiers are. Um, there are no hard set rules to what the set is. Uh, popularity has come about with different types of signifier symbols. But it's good for you to know. And what some people will do is they'll create a bunch of symbols that have meaning for them and they'll put them at the beginning of their journal and usually after the index. So it's basically as you're writing, okay, well here's a here's a point, you know, favorite favorite type of fish. And um, they decide that, well, I think I like this fish, you know, a tick mark could be something meaningful for you, a heart might be great, um, you know, a thumbs up. Pretty much sky's the limit to make it as simple and as graphical. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> um, so after you've developed your signifier and your key, uh, we, we then have your calendar pages. And there are different types of formats and calendar pages that are available on the market. Some sheets are available loosely. Some of them are integrated in the bullet journal itself. So we have what we call a spreadsheet, which is basically seeing all of your activities at a glance that are categorized. Or you could have a page which is called a log page, which is a list of things happening on a particular day, a particular week, or a particular month. And then you can include additional pages into your journal based on your specific needs or your goals or your wants and such. The next concept, so now that you've got all your base elements down, this is where the real journaling begins. And the, con the concept of your actual journaling is what they call rapid logging. And you probably would wonder why rapid logging. As I said, we, ta we talked earlier that it's easy, brief, to the point. So rapid logging consists of four parts. You are writing about your topics, you're writing short sentences, 
you're creating bullets and you're also making your page numbers because you're building your journal as you go along or possibly in the journal that you've selected to look for yourself could also already be um, paginated. So how do we use topics when we're uh, getting into the concept of rapid logging? Um, what you would do is you would put a short descriptive heading at the top of your journal. You could take time to think about what types of topics you want and you could use that to set, this, to set the base for you to create your new pages. And then just start with condensed sentences. Very easy. But what, then what comes into is that, so where do the bullets come in? You could, you basically are popping your bullet right beside, so if you look at how the formats I've been using, that's your bullet. Your tasks. What is an actionable item on your list? Just put your bullet or your dot placed at the front. If you're looking at separating your events, uh, put a little O when you've completed it. Uh, you can also categorize your notes. You could do your thoughts, your facts, your observations. Uh, it's one of those, here, you can call it like a low priority item or no action required. And then of course, as you go along and Know, get comfortable with it, it's going to come to a point where, well, what if I didn't get all the things done that I wanted to do? So the stuff that hasn't been done or completed or still pending, they call this migrating your content, which is transferring your information from one area to another, reviewing all the scope of your activities that have taken place. And this is where you will go, go back and create a new page or make a new section called the undone or the not, you know, still to complete or the pending or whatever you want to call it. The whole point is, is that if you're someone who's on the go like myself and you have a ton of things to do, this is where this um, framework does help to keep you going. Um, for those of you that are in the creative fields, um, podcasters, for example, you probably have a lot of ideas coming up or you're trying to schedule or multitask. It's getting all of your little facts and features uh, down pat. Or even just using it in everyday life, if you know that, oh, I have to go and get this done, and I have to get my groceries, and I have to do this, and just quick, you know, one to two words, brief sentences. Uh, my general rule of thumb is no more than five, six words. Brief and rapid, hence rapid logging. Any questions so far? How many of you journal or have some kind of agenda? And how are you finding, is it, is it working for you? Do you guys find you're very devoted to logging or agending and stuff? Um, can I share a 30 second story? Yeah. Um, I've been journaling for a long time, like five, six years, uh, you know, going to events and so forth. And I found that I use a combination of things from little you know, uh, dollar signs to asterisks to highlighting, kind of developed my own little system that really helped to go back even years late years later to the crucial information um, that the person shared. So uh, I think it's very powerful to do something like this. But uh, again, you develop your own style and your own little legend of things. And I got creative, you know, high, different highlighters sometimes and just because yeah. uh, some of the creation was very powerful that I wanted to remember. Um, for me, I, I love to write lists. I always have timelines. Mm -hmm. However, um, in my industry or in the creative field, sometimes I get asked something that is a disruptor and takes me off the bullet plan, off the timeline, to inter like to start documenting a sort of <coughs> mitigating solution to that would be a task in itself. Yes. You know, and then um, if weeks would go by, I check up on that. Did I get to it? No, I didn't. I didn't even make time for it. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Now my boss is going to go. Why didn't this get done? Well, I uh, this came as so. What you're telling me is you don't know how to manage your time. I'm like, well, no, I can manage my time, but you know, uh, this came up. You know, so anything I say would technically be an excuse. So what I'd like to do is, how do you, uh, if you have stuff that's set in stone, how do you sort of um, get past all these sort of things that take you off course? Sure. Like bullet journal. Yeah. So this is where the migrating content pieces would be very helpful. What I do personally with my journal, um, because I've had experiences very similar to yours, as yours too, is to, well, you were supposed to get this done for me yesterday, why is it not coming in today? And, you know, I could give you a whole ton of valid, non-valid excuses, but, you know,
know, being able to see in the for, you know, getting some foresight, because you may or may not know if you are going to make that deadline or not, because obviously there's lots of uncontrollable circumstances. So the minute I start to feel and get an inkling that this might not get done, I automatically open up a brand new section called possibly not ready or, you know, entitled it whatever you want or, you know, to follow up or whatever the varying title. And then I transfer that in. So once I know that, okay, um, this sheet, did, this report isn't ready, where am I going to put it back in? I will transfer it back to the appropriate section. So let's say if this has to, if I have a page devoted to one of my peers who I count on or let's say my admin assistant, I will migrate that piece back into my page that's devoted for things for her to do. So I tend to use more the, uh, the list actions where I will have a page for each person or each concept or each item. And if I know that that person needs to deliver that back to me or I need to have some interaction, I will migrate that. And then once it's been completed, so let's say, okay, I gotta sh send this off to her and I need to have it back by Sunday. I'll put a little star that says, you know, Sherry Sunday report. And then once it's been done, then I'll take a highlighter and I'll just you know, highlight it to say, great, it's been done, or a check mark, and then knowing that that's been done, and then that's how you sort of bring it all, bring it all back to the, to the flow of it. So okay. It's a little bit manipulating, but it's also being able to help you stay organized, knowing that, hey, I've got stuff that I know that needs to be done, has been done, but still outstanding, and that can be a total suction in itself. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, well, I'll see what happens. I'll yeah, I'll try it out. Yeah. Does digital, digital, calendar, uh, digital journal count in your opinion? Uh, yes, it does. I was actually going to talk about that further on, but I'll mention to it. By no means, I mean, we're all dependent on, on technology. Uh, in fact, even the creator of the bullet journaling concept, he does have an app on the, the App Store and the Google Play Store. Um, it's called bulletjournal.com, um, and I believe it's about $3.99. And it's not to say that you're, you know, eliminating technology completely, but I like to see that being used hand in hand. But science, uh, scientific studies have shown that actually when you're putting stuff down on paper, writing, you, you tend to connect more with it. Because when you're, you know, typing in somebody's contact info on your phone, there's a little bit of a disconnect. But when you're actually writing it, you're feeling it, you're seeing it, you know, there's power, there's emotions, there's feelings to it. So, so I would say, like, no, I'm not saying don't eliminate it completely, but some people will tend to, you know, if you're on the go and, you know, hey, your journal's not with you, um, you may want to put a quick note, you know, hopefully remembering that you'll know to transfer it over. So I definitely believe in, you know, partnering the two together. Uh, when you said that you connect it when you write it, because mm -hmm. that doesn't happen to me. I think it, it depends on the person. It also depends on the person, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm totally disconnected with paper. Right. Not just because I have a horrible time driving that sometimes I cannot leave myself. Mm -hmm. But because also, like, when you are on the go and when you have your journal with you, yes. it doesn't have a reminder to tell you that you're coming from a meeting to another or you're coming, getting up from this to, to that. Mm -hmm. You have to look at your journal all the time. Right. And it's it kind of a, like a second second task for me mm -hmm. when I go to write. When I have my notes on Google Keep and yes. when I can convert them to a calendar item when I have a meeting and I can right. They can remind me, and I can tell them, like, remind me two hours before because I because I have to go travel that much to that time. I think I think this is the the concept of journaling. I mean, I'm not against the reading journals, of course. But right. This is how things started. Right. But the concept of, of journaling, is you have a lot of people have like this mentality that what is on paper is on paper, what's on digital is digital, and I think this is not. Right. This is not true. I mean, like, besides, I mean. Digital journaling is much better for the environment. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah. So there are there are benefits, as you can see. There are pros and cons to it. So, hi. What's the name of the developer or the creator? Uh, Ryder, R Y D E R, okay. Carol, C A R R O L L. And uh, his his website is called uh, Bullet Journal. Because there's a bullet journal app that is free. I don't know if that's his. Uh, it's a black, I believe. It's a, it's a, um, the cover is black, um, but it is from bulletjournal.com. Exactly. If you go into the details on the app store with the authoring, um, it should have the mention of his name. Okay, great. Thanks.
know, your topics, your page numbers, um, again, like I mentioned, bullets, short sentences, um, your tasks, your events, your notes. Um, keep it simple. Simplicity is key. Um, you know, got pen, paper, you know, since some people use stencils, um, stickers, stamps. Um, are any of you familiar with the concept of um, indigo children or crystal children? A little bit? So, um, and, and adults as well, too. Um, so, there seems to be a generation, I guess if you can relate it to you know, our newer generations of Gen X, Gen Y, and Millennials. Um, people who were born roughly after 1974, 1975, seem to have an interesting disposition about um, how they see the, the world. Um, more sensitive people, um, a lot of empathetic people. Um, and very, very sensitive where they need to have a lot of attention and they need to really feel and see and connect um, and somehow want to make a difference to the world. So we have found that with bullet journaling, this is the generation that I need to see colors in my journal. I need to put a sticker or a gold star to be able to have that event jump out on me. So this is where, you know, organizing information, you know, because when you're looking at something, it's dull. It's like reading the newspaper. Yes, you're reading a newspaper article. It's all in block. It's all in newsprint. But for somebody who's bullet journaling, uh, that generation, they seem to, you know, I have to absolutely highlight that this issue. And I've noticed a lot of students over the years as well, too, that, you know, I've got to highlight it. I've got to put a sticker. I've got to put that big giant paper clip to really have it stand out. So this is where, as I mentioned, the embellishments uh, come into, you know, but, but they do it very simply and they do it very elegantly. And as they're building and writing and adding pages on it, that's where, you know, their life is completely depicted or the project that they're working on, you know, comes to life for them. Uh, migrating your content. So, you know, transferring your sections over of the to-dos or the, you know, pendings and then checking off those accomplishments that come through. Um, and, you know, if you're new to the concept, you know, how do you get started? Um, you can pretty much start anywhere you like. Um, it could be, you know, a wish list. It could be a habit tracker. It could be a time tracker if you're looking to track time. Um, task list, um, goals. You know, all of you have your goals. It could be wanting to just, you know, have a brain dump of things that have been coming through your mind, and you just really have to jot them down before you forget. Um, or even like a gratitude section. You know, some people like to. Uh, When's a good time to journal? Uh, I certainly encourage you to, you know, 30 minutes to an hour a day can be very useful. Uh, I like to do them in 15 minute chunks myself, only because I know how my schedule is, but if I know that, you know, it's my day off and I'm, you know, lying in bed and, you know, wanting to sit on the couch, you know, comfortably, I'll grab my journal and, you know, do a couple of short pieces, but very, very useful. And then as you've done it, and as you've done your journaling, you know, take some time to review your day, you know, evaluate it, mark off your completes, your incompletes. Maybe there are some afterthoughts you want to diarize. Um, and then people also use this to prepare for the next day. You know, you want to brainstorm how you want your book. What is the ideal day for me going to look tomorrow? Um, set up your page for the next day. Um, and then, you know, first thing in the morning with your morning coffee or breakfast, you know, have a good refresh, you know, look at the first things you want to do. And as you come along with it, you know, every accomplishment that's come through it, you know, looks pretty perfect as well too. And these are, you know, tried, tested, and true, but again, everybody will find their own style, you know. It's not a race, it's not a competition, it's something very personal for yourself. Um, but, you know, it, eventually as you add more content to it, it becomes your powerful life. And, you know, some, some final thoughts. Um, lots of people have found different ways to use and personalize their journals, like I mentioned, but what's the key importance is that find something that really suits you. you know, like, it's, your journal is also pretty much your personality. Um, and the best thing is that they are flexible, they allow for plenty of freedom. Um, and keep in mind too, every page in your journal, it doesn't have to look the same. There's no right or wrong in, in organizing it. 
my first page could be a traditional line page. Two pages down, I could be inserting a grid page. Uh, or I could have a line page and an unlined page. But you know what's most important is that you actually have fun. Um, some types of journals that I would recommend, if you go to chapters um, in Indigo, there, um, there are some bullet journals that are actually designed. Um, creators of the bullet journal concept themselves, they have a bullet journal that they market online that's available, I believe it's about $25 US. But I found for myself personally a lot of the colorful journals and you know, papery, stationery stuff that you see at chapters is great. Um, dollar stores have wonderful covers as well too, so it's a matter of finding what pieces. And we even have people who use traditional binders, they'll just buy a nice binder that suits them and they'll buy loose sheets and they'll make them the way. So someone will, you know, get a bunch of grid sheets and pull punch them and pop them in and then they'll insert it with loose leaf sheets. Um, I have a scrapbooking friend who actually does that because as she gets her scrapbooking ideas together, you know, well today I really have the plot and I'll you know sort out what type of scrapbook I need to make for my client. Or afterwards it'll be, well, I need to design a pattern or a grid, so here are my my quick two cents to be able to show. So that's how it all blends together with um, everything such. Um, from a technological space, since we are podcasters, um, people who like to do their podcasts or they're editing their pictures or they're doing their videos, um, a lot of uh, the creative industries, what they found that it's, they find this very, very useful for scheduling, especially for scheduling deadlines. Um, you know, maybe meeting notes when they're ready to meet with their client. You know, here's the here's the product before, here's the product after. Um, what do we need to do to get to next steps? You know, very quick. Um, and even you know, get their scribes in to uh, be able to hold into that as well too. And if you you know feel that you need some support, uh, that you would like to learn more about you know, actually doing it and doing the live concept. Uh, I will be hosting a live workshop uh, in March. So if you are interested in uh, learning more or keeping in touch about different concepts that are trending with it, uh, please feel free to uh, drop your name and your email address and I'll uh, add you onto my list. Uh, or if you just need support as you're coming along trying to figure out how to tackle it, um, my email address is mybulletjournaling at Any questions, thoughts? Can you show us what it looks like? Uh, yeah, I can give you a sample of it. signifiers that we talked about and uh, his notes are very very brief but uh, that is how they they call it they call it the analog the analog system for the digital age um, but that is the founders that was actually the very that's the very beginnings of it so this is his list version where he's got um, his calendar and his dates two three words um, you know that's a schedule and on the right hand so when he's accomplished something, um, he's crossed it off. Um, at the top, you sort of see like his X. It's probably a thought that's not too important or not a big priority for him. Uh, his less than sign could be something that for him is a lesser priority or a higher priority. The asterisk with the greater sign, you see about a couple of lines down. Um, I think it says get get birthday present. So for him, important, but you know, of great importance. So as you can see. The bullet feel of it is you know, very brief and, and small, so that's why it, they have it in that sense. Personally, um, I like to uh, I like to keep it at top of mind throughout the course of my day. 
Um, it's sort of like with any habit, uh, it, it does take time and you sort of have to get into it. But I find that if you have a topic or a concept or something of interest that you're really, really passionate about, um, you know, go for it. You know, jot a couple of lines, open up a page just for that thought. And then as you're, you know, say going throughout the course of your day or the course of your interactions, um, this is where you can start, you know, composing and thinking about it. It's, um, I guess it's kind of like top of mind that you always have to remember that, oh yeah, I really should put that down to help me remember. Because the whole purpose of it, as I mentioned earlier, is that you want to give yourself a sense of structure and clarity. And if you know that you have to stay motivated and organized, like if you have papers that are due, then again, it's, it's sort of like a, a way of life to, to get it. Um, other things that motivate me uh, to, you know, keep it going. Um, I have friends who also bullet journal, so sometimes we'll exchange, you know, topics and thoughts. Um, you know, so how do you do this? Or I'm thinking about that. And sometimes just having a buddy, you know, to be able to connect and do it. Uh, I know some people will get together and they'll journal, you know, together over coffee and tea. So you know, they'll have um, munchies and they'll start, you know, working away. So there, there are there are a variety of things, but when you're alone and on your own, yes, I understand that as well too. Um, I find music also helps. You know, when you're in that state, that hey, I'm in a creative mood. I like to write. You know, I want to do something. Uh, so those are you know some pretty interesting you know, concepts as well. I guess the, the question goes back. You know, what motivates you to get that one thing? Like, let's say you have that real dream prize or that dream goal you're looking to achieve. You know, like what what would be some of your internal things that would on the go for that. So it's almost like the same concept in that respect too. Yeah. Hi. I, I find that one way to, to stay motivated, like what makes it fun for me, I like a nice fountain pen or mm -hmm. high quality paper. Yeah. If, if, the, if the tools mm -hmm. bring you pleasure, exactly. then, yeah. then you associate the pleasure with the, the whole thing. As opposed to like if, if you're using like let's say a, a dull pencil mm -hmm. on really crappy crinkly paper, right. You'll stop because you're just associated with, with you know. Right. Whereas if you go and spend a hundred bucks on a Mont Blanc pen, yeah. you'll probably be more. Where can you get a Mont Blanc for a hundred bucks? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, yeah, and that and that's sort of you know when you're you know looking at feeling and sensing what you know what is my journal all of that you know um, my my personal journal, my favorite pen is actually my Sensa pen. I don't know if you remember back in the day, but Sensa had a very soft rubbery tip that kind of molded in with you and. Really smooth way. They don't make them anymore, unfortunately. But um, that's that's my motivator. When I even started first, you know, using it to journal, and when I was using it in high school, and that still hangs around with me when I need to write too. So, but you know, it's all about you know your pens, your colors, your feels, your you know whatever you know. Um, some people like flowery designs. Some people like um, journals that have the year on it. So of course, at Christmas time, when all the annual calendars and journals come out, 2019, you know. And, and some people will even have like a devoted, you know, as I said, some people will devote a journal to that one goal or that one project. Some people will have it as a multi-purpose for themselves. So, but um, you know, as as the the art and the act of actually journaling it through, it's it's a system in itself. But it can it can be a lot of fun. Any other questions or thoughts? Well, I hope that I've been able to. Uh, give you a, a sense of what the concept is all about. Um, I'll be here for a couple of minutes if you do have any additional questions. And if you uh, did want to sign up to stay in touch for more info, there's a piece of paper